Hi, I'm Bet Corris, and welcome to the August edition of This is Glendale. Our usual co-host, Joe Davinsky, is on an extended vacation, so for the next couple of shows, we will have guest hosts, starting with Mayor Lofty. Welcome. Well, thank you, Bet. It's great to be here. And I just want to say how much I enjoy each month uh, looking forward to the uh, next edition of uh, This is Glendale. And I know a lot of people in the village feel the same way. They tell me about it. And so you guys really have a great thing going here. Thank you. Thank you. So what's happening in this, the third edition of This is Glendale? We have a full and diverse program. First, we take an extensive look at the massive construction project at Bethany School. And then at the other end of the spectrum, I have a wonderful conversation with Beth Sullivarger in an intimate garden setting in which she explains to us about an unusual fundraiser that will benefit the Glendale Heritage Preservation. And sandwiched between those two extremes, Joe Dubinsky had a conversation with the fire chief, Kevin Hardwick, about the new fire station. Lots of data about that. But first, before we get started with the program, why don't you bring us all up to date about the quiet zone? Well, Beth, that's one of my favorite subjects. And uh, there's a lot happening on the quiet zone now. Uh, we have, uh, as of this taping, uh, we are just about done with the construction work. Uh, there are some things left uh, that we expect uh, will be done by uh, early August. And uh, we think that uh, we will be in a by the end of that, the new gates are going to be up. There's right. going to be new safety equipment uh, in, in place. Uh, there will be fencing uh, along the, uh, uh, the uh, parking lot. Uh, let me assure you, the fencing to start with is going to be uh, snow fencing, orange snow fencing. Let me assure you that will not be the permanent fencing. Good to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have. We, have, we uh, don't want permanent ugly. <laughs> no, no, no. We are avoiding permanent ugly. And uh, so we expect uh, that uh, once the construction is all done, uh, we will then uh, send a notice to the uh, state, to the railroad, to everybody else who cares that we, Glendale, the village of Glendale, we are establishing a quiet zone. And once we send that notice out by certified mail, uh, we will have, there will be 21 days <clears throat> go for a waiting period and then the trains horns will stop. Hallelujah. So, so when do you think that might occur? I know it's a guess, but... Well, uh, we are uh, feeling pretty good that before summer ends, uh, the train horns will stop. And Well, even if it's a little delayed, mid-fall, no horns, terrific. So that's it. We'll be able to sleep with our windows open. We'll be able to sit out here in the uh, blue in the village square and not uh, have to stop talking every time uh, the trains blow their horns. Uh, and I think people throughout the village will just uh, feel a different pace of life uh, once this uh, once this happens. That's fabulous. Thank you. All right. And now, let's begin the August segment of This Is Glendale. So let's talk about this beautiful, beautiful new facility. Why was this renovation so necessary? We really had run out of space. So the, as the fire trucks have gotten bigger over the years, the original building built in 1870 was appropriate for that time period. Trucks have continually got bigger and heavier. Um, the floor on the original side of the building is still a wood floor and has concrete over top. So we're getting to the point of overloading the floor. Wow. This way we've got open area. Um, what we're trying to do is protect our firefighters from cancer is one of the other big issues. We need to do that by cleaning the gear properly, by getting the contaminants off so that our people don't breathe that on a regular basis. That's part of the, the, re, uh, the risk reduction for cancer. So that's part of the process. So what you see here is an accumulation of items to make this whole world a safer place than what we do in the fire service. So take us around the room. What's this uh, unit over here? The first unit, the gray and blue unit, that's our air compressor. That's what we've used to fill the air packs that we wear in our, in our gear to go inside of a burning building or other hazardous environment. Um, we keep hose stored here. Uh, once it gets cleaned and dried, we put it back in the rack. As we move around, you can see the gear racks. These gear racks are designed to keep everybody's gear in place and it's an open grading system so that everything can air out and dry properly. 
moisture is one of the real concerns that we deal with. This typically is a wet environment from fire hose to being around all the water. So the more things you can move air, um, we're very fortunate here we have a big fan up above to move air. Some of the traditions you'll see here on our building, the red light, which indicates a place of safety. Originally, back in the 1800s, it was a point of safety. So that was an easily identifiable light to see amongst the other candle lights or gas lights that were around that you could pick out the, where the fire station was and it was always a safe place to go to. The red doors, same reason. It was identifying the fact that where it was a safe place to go and where you could get a hold of somebody for help. And the other part of the tradition we're going to do here, we are bringing the fire truck in. The old standard was when you got a new station or a new fire truck that the firefighters actually pushed the truck back into the new bay, um, signifying the fact of housing the truck just like you housed a, a cart behind a, a horse back in the old days. Um, we're going to carry that tradition on here. Again, it shows that our hands and what we can build in today's technology, we're still a team. Stand by for the following message. Attention all companies, it is with great pride that Splendale Fire Department announces the opening of their new firehouse. While their previous buildings served the community well for over 100 years, they look forward to many additional years of service out of their new quarters. Hamilton County Communications joins all in wishing the, them the very best. Hello and welcome to this segment of This is Glendale. I'm Beth Chorus, and with me today is Beth Solabarger. Welcome, Beth. Hey there. And we are here in the private gardens of one of the most magnificent homes in, in Glendale, uh, known as Stone Olden. And we are here because Glendale Heritage Preservation is going to do something special. Can you want to tell us all about it? Yes, we're going to have a September soiree. It's a new fundraising event for Glendale Heritage Preservation on Saturday, September 21st. And we're going to have a tour of this fabulous house, which was uh, built in 1920 by architect Stanley Matthews as his own home. Matthews, yes, that's a, a long line family here in Glendale. Tell us a little bit about the architecture. Well, um, it's built of stones from a local creek bed in the style of an English cottage. Stone Olden. Houses in, in England often have names predicated on either a family thing or its location, so it's perfect. Stone Olden. I exactly, love it. Exactly, exactly. This was his first project, which is incredible because he had just finished architecture school in 1920, and yet it's very sophisticated and includes a lot of unusual um, aspects. And one of them is that the formal entrance is actually on the rear through this courtyard. Which is where we are right now and you are seeing behind us. Tell us some more about the the event. Um, what It's a fundraiser, obviously. Mm -hmm. You want to give us some more details? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, the event includes a tour of the house and a catered reception in the courtyard. The reservations are $100 a person. Um, it is a fundraiser, after all. And it's open only to members of Glendale Heritage Preservation. Why only members? Well, um, we can only accommodate 50 people, and we want to show our appreciation for our members. Um, so anyone can become a member. It's only $30 per household and you can um, pay your dues at the same time that you make your reservation. Terrific. I think we've mentioned the deadline for this is which is September the 14th. 14th. And come to the Glendale Heritage Preservation, also known as the Depot, the museum, and sign up for this. If you're not a member, become a member and come support Glendale Heritage Preservation. Thank you, Beth. You're welcome. That's it for This is Glendale. Hello and welcome to this segment of This is Glendale. Today we are in part of the renovated section of the Bethany School and with me is Sister Lynn Julian. Hi, <laughs> I'm Lynn Julian. I am the Assistant Superior of the Community of the Transfiguration and I'm also the liaison between the school and the community. And also we have David Gould and David what do you do? Um, my name is David Gould and I am the head of school at Bethany School. Well we are here to talk about this magnificent construction project. First of all, I'm wondering what was the impetus for all of this? And David, you want to start? Sure. Uh, 
before I arrived in 2014, the sisters and the school had gone through a, an extensive ext uh, strategic planning process starting in 2013. And part of that st uh, strategic planning process was the recognition that the campus buildings were in a state of really needing some significant upgrades and upkeep. And so in 2014, when I first arrived, we started the process of trying to um, work on making the strategic plan a reality and part of that was looking at the master site plan and so through that extensive master site plan process starting in 2014 and going into 2015 it was recognized that what the sisters and what the school really wanted to go through was a pretty significant uh, not only renovation but building project of new buildings. Terrific and I understand that the sisters have a very strong opinion about <laughs> this universe and how we're supposed yes. to keep this planet green. So you want to tell us a little bit more about what drove those? I really do. That's one of our theological points too, is that we are, we are meant to be caretakers of God's creation. And um, so when we got ready to build, we decided to really go all the way with making it as green as possible, even though it, it's a, quite a bit of cost right up front. But um, it, it really is part of our mission. And um, we're very excited about how that's played out. Tell us a little bit about Bethany School itself. What grades do you okay. have here? Well, currently we're a day school for kindergarten through eighth grade. We don't have a preschool program yet. But um, in the beginning, it was a home um, primarily for young girls and really mostly babies. But it, as they got older, of course, they needed to be educated. And so we we became a school also. Um, let's talk about some of the design concepts and you mentioned managing nature as best one can. Mm -hmm. Who wants to talk about the LEED? But it's actually it's an acronym LEED that uh, refers to buildings that are built in the spirit of of, of being um, friendly to God's earth, um, to being green, to being ec ecologically sound. So the use of solar panels, of geo exchange well fields, of making sure that the envelope of the building um, is in line with energy efficiency standards. And, and, and in LEED certification, there are different levels of certification. And so this building, um, when it's completed, which is it more or less is at this point in time, um, we've received the highest level of LEED certification, platinum level. And this makes it the most energy efficient school building with air conditioning um, that we have in the United States right now. How did you achieve this? What, what did you do design-wise mm. to make sure that you're going to be energy efficient? Yeah, it's not only design, although as he pointed out, the envelope of the school, uh, this side of the third through eighth grade building has small windows and will not need as much air conditioning. This is the south facing side. Uh huh. And but also the solar panels are on the roof on the south facing side. Many many solar panels, and um, the and there aren't classrooms over here. There are some breakout rooms and closets and that kind of thing. So we didn't need the big beautiful windows. On the other side, the north facing side, we have bigger windows and it lets in the natural light. And um, it's it the you'll see the features in the front echo the language of the older cottages in the older building. Tell us about the geothermal. The, the geothermal is actually a style of, of uh, heating and cooling um, buildings, and and it involves the drilling of wells. And it just so happens that the uh, parking lot uh, to the south of us, over just off Oak Road has 109 uh, geo exchange wells that are drilled down uh, 305 feet deep, each of them. And they are interconnected uh, with each other and web themselves into uh, an, um, a, a mechanical um, room behind us that helps provide um, uh, heating and cooling for this building, the cafeteria that we're in right now, and the other future buildings that are part of this project and the existing buildings that we already have here. So eventually, uh, the geo exchange um, energy um, um, heating and cooling system can be in place for all of the dwellings that are on this on this campus right now. Okay, so let's talk a little bit what's going to happen next and how soon you're maybe going to have some of this school available to the children. Well, very soon. <laughs> in fact, this coming school year, they will be moving in. Um, we had movers move in the um, boxes of books and everything yesterday and today, and. Um, that it'll be ready for occupancy in, in late August. Terrific. Did you have something else you wanted to add? 
No, I, I, you know, we're very excited. Our third grade through eighth grade is going to be in this building. Um, and so we're so excited for the first day of school, August 21st, when this is going to be a populated, active building with teachers and students inside it. And we're so excited. And we're so excited to share this not only with the Bethany community, but also the wider Glendale community, especially our most adjacent neighbors who've been extremely patient and kind to us as we have gone through this extensive construction project and the approval process that the village of Glendale guided us through. Um, a number of years ago to get us where we are today. And the fact that uh, this summer we were going to be breaking ground on the new kindergarten through second grade building that's going to involve, sadly, uh, the, the demolition of two of our cottages that have already been vacated, um, but the creation of another cot another building that's going to be very much like in the, in the, in the in the, uh, the spirit of this particular building that includes the, uh, the, the Tudor style, the brick, and the limestone that all speak to the various buildings that already exist here at Bethany School, so there's a cohesive whole to it all. So exciting. What a terrific way to wrap it up. Wow, there's a lot happening this month in Glendale. You know, there always is something interesting, and thanks for joining us. We really appreciate your stepping up. Before we go, a couple of reminders. There's the Glendale Cornhole Tournament, which will be held August the 10th to benefit the Harry Whiting Brown Center. And I hear this is going to be a really exciting tournament with some great prize money. Uh, first place is going to be a, hundred and, a minimum of $125, second will be a minimum of $75, and third place will be at least $50. Notice I'm saying minimum. Yeah. Actually, uh, the, each team that enters, they'll put five more dollars into the, prize, into the fund and the winners will split that uh, prize money. Now you have to be at least 18 years old to enter. And uh, now there will be some cornhole uh, boards uh, available for uh, younger people to play for fun. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I'm really looking forward to it. That's great. To register, go to glendalecornhole.com, click on the sign up, and download the registration form for your, for your team. And don't forget about the police department's back to school drive. Uh, this is an annual event where our police department helps gather materials for uh, backpacks for children who uh, need them and are going back to uh, school in the fall. Uh, and it's a really worthy cause. Hope we can all support it. And you can drop off checks or gift cards directly to the police station. And also you can provide your own school supplies if you choose. Just drop it off there as well. That wraps it up. I'm Bet Chorus. And I'm Don Lofty, and, and this, this is, is Glendale. Glendale. Thank you for watching. <laughs>